everybody and welcome to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. My name is Element 5 and today we're taking a quick break from class mods and looking at a recent mini boss mod called the Lumberjack, created by Dismas and a slightly startled seal. Now my intention was to get this out for Halloween and the end of October, given its theme, uh, but really I've got my eye on anything that seal touches these days, given that we're now in the polishing stages of their huge standalone dungeon mod which we'll be covering here in the near future called the Sunward Isles. We're having a blast with this right now on our modded only playthrough on Twitch, which is filled with custom enemies, music, items, and other mini bosses as well. So it's exciting to see Seal doing projects apart from the Isles dungeon already. And while the Lumberjack is a fairly simple and straightforward mini boss, I've had a lot of fun with this in the past few weeks, and it's not the only one that he's working on. Uh, in fact, he's also teased this image just recently on our Discord server, showing what's to be the background artwork for something entirely different and on the way. And because this is a boss mod, do keep in mind that there are spoilers ahead about the fight, mechanics, rewards, etc. But ostensibly, you are here to see that stuff, so let's go ahead and jump into how this all works. Now, once you subscribe to and install the Lumberjack mod, all you have to do to access the fight is reach week 12 on your save file, obtain four level five heroes, and then you're gonna go to town event titled Mysterious Clearings, which reads, an ordinarily large clearings of trees are being found throughout the wield. This is depriving the hamlet of valuable lumber and letting monsters roam unhindered. Plot quest, prevent the clearings. Now, the thing about the lumberjack is that there's very little backstory made available for this boss. In fact, almost nothing is listed on the Steam page itself, but Seal did inform me that while much of this boss's story is left to interpretation, the major inspiration of that is of a medieval executioner, the man tasked with swinging the axe to behead a prisoner. In addition, the artist did share a bit of lore with us, which reads, sometimes in the light of the blood moon, you can see a lone figure wandering among the shadows of trees, often accompanied by the sounds of axe against stone and an indistinct mumbling. Sometimes you can even see a red tortured bag adorned over his head, which protects him from the outside world, lending escape from his experienced horrors. He no longer dreams of killing the inhabitants of the village whom the church was ripening in occultism. He no longer sees hordes of monsters that crawled out of the darkest corners of the weald. He no longer has to experience that pain of losing his arm while protecting others, now he is free, free from all the shackles of morality and rationality. So we know at least from the quest and this bit of backstory that this was likely the Hamlet's executioner who lost an arm protecting the people from growing threats found throughout the various areas in and around the village, cultists, monsters and all. And having seen such horrors, even losing an arm is now completely broken, torn apart from any sense of reason and morality, wandering aimlessly through the weald, destroying the forest and depriving the hamlet of much needed resources. Now, once the town event is active, you'll find a new boss quest over here in the weald called Prevent Clearings, which asks you to find the culprit perpetrating these clearings and slay all who interfere. Now, you'll wanna build yourself a decent champion weald group fit for a medium length dungeon and you'll be met with a custom loading screen and then enter into a preset dungeon which has you tracking down the wandering axeman. Now, while this is a pre-made dungeon, there is still plenty of RNG involved. The layout and locations of enemies, curios, and traps is static, but the enemy mashes, the curios themselves are all randomized with the exception of the location of the lumberjack. Now, the fight itself, once you find it, really does feel appropriate as a mini boss. And you'll see here that he starts with 193 HP, has two actions, 15 dodge, a fairly slow speed of four, and moderate resistances with moderate vulnerability to blight and bleed. He also starts with a debuff called Flicker of the Axe Disabled. Now the fight itself is actually pretty straightforward and it is kind of a race. You're gonna be encountered by two primary abilities. The first is called Blunt Blows, and is essentially a debuff and stun hit to the back two heroes in your party. The second being Flagitious Carnage, 
which is a debuff and bleed to the front two heroes of your party. Now at any given time, he can also use something called Grind the Axe, which will give him Repost plus a 30% damage buff in addition to the previous two abilities. And this will just increase in chance as the fight goes on. And once he's used Grind the Axe, he can now attack you with Flicker of the Axe, which is a massive group hit, shuffle, and bleed, and then gains a debuff for cooldown. So really, you're just going to be wanting to endure all of the AoE that he's throwing at you, the, the bleeds, the shuffle. Important then to think about shuffle immunity, to think about repost, to think about stacking dots on this boss. If you do that well enough, the fight should not be that difficult. But do keep in mind that if he gets a character to death's door and he hits that character at death's door, it will guarantee a killing blow, being that he is an executioner. Upon defeating the Lumberjack, you'll receive some decent loot, including his mask, which lends some bleed resists, huge bleed buffs against human and beast, all of which come at the cost of stress and stun resist, with the added bonus of bleed amount against enemies in execute range or below 50%. And that won't complete the quest, though, as you still need to finish off all who interfere, quote-unquote, including the 100% of room battles. Once you do finally complete the quest and return home, that is not the last time that you'll actually be haunted by and encounter the Lumberjack as he now has a 6% chance of reappearing in any champion wield quest after the encounter is done. And Seal reminds me to include the fact that you will be comforted by that same loading screen, letting you know that in fact you might run into him. And that is basically it, a fairly straightforward and fun champion wield boss Something a little different. Sorry, Seal, that I couldn't get this out before Halloween and the end of October. Let me know in the comments below what you think the best group comp is against a champion wield boss like this one with multiple turns and AoE damage. And of course, I'll have a link to download the Lumberjack just below the video. And remember that as long as you're playing on PC, it is quite easy to install mods through the Steam Workshop. All you have to do is head over there, find the mod you're looking for, make sure you subscribe to the mod and then boot the game and then head over here on the side of your save file to your mod selector and then make sure that you click in the one that you want. Make sure you pay attention to on the Steam page if any of them require your mod to be loaded in a specific order. Congrats to Seal and Dismas for a fun and straightforward mini boss, the first of a handful that we're going to cover here over the next few weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to join us on Discord if you're interested in seeing previews for more bosses like this one. And do make sure to join us on Twitch as we are just now in the early stages of our modded only Blood Moon playthrough, playing with a ton of the newest modded classes, a bunch that we feature in these videos, as well as a, a whole host of custom enemies and many bosses including this one more videos to come this week thanks everybody we'll see you next time